In this second part of an introduction to the credo, we're going to be looking at verbs. We're look, going to be looking at the tenses and voices of verbs. First, let's look at tenses. Tenses mean in what time the action took place. Does it take place in the present, in the past, in the future, in the past per perfect, uh, in the future perfect? <laughs> different tenses. One verb to try to get straight is the verb to be. It's actually quite different in the in form in English for the different persons and tenses. Uh, very different in the Latin, in fact much clearer. In English, for instance, when we're talking about the present tense, we say I am, you are, he, she, it is. We are, you are, they are. So we use different words. In English, we learn it because this is how we speak. Uh, we don't teach people the grammar of it. We just know it from the time we're small children. Non-native English speakers might get confused. They might say you am or he were uh, because they haven't learned it growing up. This is difficult for them. I am, you are, he, she, it is, we are, you are, they are. In Latin, as I said, the verbs don't need to have the pronoun with them. It's already embedded in the word itself. So I am is sum, plural of that is sumus. They look somewhat similar for the first person. You are est, and plural you are is estus. Again, they look similar. He, she, it is est, and they are sunt. They don't look alike. Sum es est, sumus estus sunt. The imperfect or past, simple past it's called, again in English is fairly similar. Uh, only two words indicate that. I was, you were, he, she, it was. We were, you were, they were. The Latin looks a lot, every part looks a lot similar to the other parts. Uh, this RA is an indication of the past, the simple past. Era means I was, eros, you were, erot, he, she, it was. Again, eram, I was, eramus, okay, you can see the similarity again. M-U-S is often the um, first person plural for verbs. Eram, eramus, you can almost cheat and say U-S means us, which indicates were, we. All right, a plural, eram, eros, erot, eros and erotus, you singular, you are, and you plural, erotus. That T-I-S is often an indication of the plural of you, and a simple S is often the indication of the plural of the singular. And we have erot, that T is often a sign, of a third person singular and errant, some form of A-N-T, E-N-T, U-N-T, indicates the third person plural. Eram, eros, errat, eramus, erratus, errant. As I said, these are freestanding words when we say I was somewhere, I was doing something, but they're also parts of verbs. Actually, I was doing, <laughs> was as combined with a, the present participle doing, I was doing. So they're combined with other forms of verbs to indicate tenses and types of action. Right, the future of, of essay or to be is I will be. You will be, he, she, it will be, we will be, you will be, they will be. Very nice, all exactly the same, right? But obviously it's a, a conjugation uh, inflected um, verb. In Latin, we see this R and the R, R, I as a sign of the future. The endings are the same in a, many ways uh, from in all the different tenses, not the first person singular arrow. You might think it would be erim, but it's not. It's ero. I will be. Eris, erit. Erimis, eritis, erint. So again, first person singular, first person plural, ero, erimis, this M-U-S, 
uh, at the end, which indicates the first person plural. Eris, the S on the end, singular U. Eritis, T-I-S, the plural of U. Erit, a T, and they will be errant. Again, we're going to see E-N-T, A-N-T, U-N-T um, for third person plurals. So they will be as errant. So here's um, not a regular verb, all right? Um, one that appears somewhat regularly. So there are uh, six tenses, the present, the simple past or imperfect, the future, the perfect, the past perfect, really past, and the future perfect. So present means I bless, I'm doing it right now. I blessed or was blessing meant I did it in the past. I will bless means I'll do it in the future. I have blessed, meaning I did it in somewhat the distance past. I had blessed means it's really past and really done. And future perfect looks to the future in the past <laughs> or the past in the future, but I will have blessed, I will have blessed. Now you notice in English, it's both the ending of the, of the main verb and then there is a um, supplementary verb that shows you what tenses are. I bless is the simple verb. I blessed or was blessing, both you see a change in the ending of bless, ed indicates the past or imperfect, or we use a form of the verb to be, I was blessing. For our future, we use a form of the verb to be, will, and the, the simple uh, form of the verb, I will bless. I have blessed, a, a, verb, a form of the verb to, to have. Uh, I had blessed. So we're using both the ending of ed in those words plus another form of, of another verb. I have blessed, I had blessed, and then we have two verbs. I will have blessed. Right. So it's, it's the ending plus a supplementary verb that shows us what the tense is. Now I'm going to show you how this appears in Latin. All right. We have our present simple past or imperfect, future perfect, past perfect, and future perfect. We have the English that we just looked at. I blessed, I blessed or was blessing. I will bless, I have blessed, I had blessed, and I will have blessed. Now in uh, Latin, we actually have two words here. Bene means well. Um, dico means to say. And so if I speak well of someone, I'm blessing them in a sense, right? I'm speaking well. I'm sort of um, conveying through speech some goodness to them, right? So our simple present is benedico, I bless. And now we have a ba which appears in many, but not all. There are different ways of indicating the, no, it's always B, D. I don't know why I got confused there. But the B, A is the sign in all the different conjugations for the imperfect. I blessed or was blessing, uh, benedicebam. I will bless benedicebo. I mean, we're going to see that I in the in the other tenses that we saw in air uh, in um, the future of sum or the forms of essay. I will bless benedicebo. I have blessed benedixi. Okay. I had blessed benedixeron. Benedixeron. And I will have blessed many dixero. Now these will look, uh, there's different ways that verbs have a past uh, infinitive and then form. It, it's very different for different verbs. But I just want you to uh, sort of see the similarity between the sum or essay verbs and the different tenses. Okay. Now, We're going to look at the voices of verbs 
active forms and passive forms of verbs. Uh, the active form of verb means that the, the agent who performs the action is the subject of the sentence. So we have Jim hits a home run. Right? Passive of the same thing means that the object of the action is the subject of the sentence. The, the agent is now in the sentence in some other way, usually with the verb or the preposition by. So a home run is hit by Jim. So here the home run is the subject of the sentence, but it's the object of the action. A home run is hit by Jim. Now you'll notice we use a form of the verb to be to indicate that we have a passive voice. Passive means something's happening to something rather than acting. So acting means the agent is in charge. Passive means we talk about the something that is acted upon. Right? So Jim hits a home run, active. Jim's doing the hitting. He's the subject of the sentence. A home run is hit by Jim. The home run has something done to it. So it has a passive verb. Mm. I don't know why they came together, but the alligator ate Jane is the active form of the verb. The alligator is the agent and Jane is the object. Passive means something is happening to someone. So Jane was eaten by the alligator. Now here I have um, an, a past tense in, instead of a, a present tense. Hits and is hit are present. Ate and was eaten are um, simple past. And you'll notice that those are different. They look very different, right? Here we have a form of hit with a form of the verb to be. And then we have ate and was eaten, right? So the alligator ate Jane. Jane was eaten by the alligator, you know, by Jim, okay? So the forms of uh, passive forms in English are very identifiable. He is blessed. Again, we use um, the past uh, participle, it's called, right? Uh, that has the addition of the, the uh, letters ed, blessed. And then we have some form of the verb to be or some form of the verb to have that indicates what tense a verb is. It's, it uses one of those supplementary verbs uh, to indicate that it is um, passive. So he is blessed, you could say by God, um, by life, right? He is blessed, he was blessed, he will be blessed, he has been blessed, he had been blessed, and he will have been blessed. Right? So we use quite a mouthful of words in order to indicate um, the tense and the voice uh, of verbs. Okay, so here is the Latin, somewhat more um, efficient, uh, fewer words, right? In English, we have, he is blessed. In Latin, we have benedicitur. T-U-R is a sign of the passive, benedicitur. And then we have he was blessed, and we have benedicebatur, benedicebatur, he was blessed, right? He will be blessed, benedicetur, benedicetur, right? He has been blessed, est benedictus. So there we have the Latin participle, benedictus. Blessed is an English participle. Right, so est shows it's the, the, the perfect, the past perfect. I mean, sorry, the present perfect. Est is a present form of the verb to be. We have the present perfect, est benedictus. Then we have the past perfect, erat benedictus. And we have the future perfect, erit benedictus. Right, now that's a lot. We'll see many of these tenses in uh, the creed, in the credo. Right? Um, and maybe you should go over this a couple times and just to see if you can get your eye used to it. But I'll be referring to this as we go through uh, the prayer itself. 
so I'd like now for us to uh, listen to a sung credo online. I found one that's interlinear and I found one that's Latin only. There are others, uh, others as well.